Hey everybody, welcome back to Nerd News Today. I'm Matthew, and in this episode, we're taking a trip back to the past. We're going back to simpler times, the 90s. When according to the Burger King Kids Club, kids could be kids, and times were wonderful because there was cartoons on every day after school. I feel like this generation doesn't really get that experience, but we had it, and it was one of the greatest things ever. And for me, coming home at 3 p.m. meant I would turn on my TV to watch the Disney afternoon. For years, this syndicated block was one of the best things about coming home after school, and a definite constant in my life for many, many, many years. And that's why today I am so excited to show off this statue to you guys, because today we're going to be taking a look at that piece of history, because on this episode, we are taking a look at Diamond Select's new gallery diorama statue of Darkwing Duck. It's a great time to be a Disney fan because it almost feels like there's a Disney afternoon renaissance happening right now. I think we're kind of at that perfect age where nostalgia is kicking in and licensors are saying, hey, we should take advantage of these folks. And yeah, it's a great thing for us because now we've got all sorts of cool new merchandise, including this statue from Diamond Select. I can't wait to get this guy out of the packaging, but first things first, let's talk about this box here. And like all of the Diamond Select gallery diorama pieces, it's in this kind of similar cube. Uh, what you get here is a giant window on each of the sides here. So you have a giant window on the front, a big one here on this side, and another huge one on the opposite side here. Uh, but most importantly, you do get that signature Diamond Select sunroof to really let you see practically every single angle of this Darkwing Duck. And as far as the box design itself too, beyond the windows, it's not really the most colorful or exciting thing to look at. It's mostly just meant to be a sort of starry night for Darkwing Duck here. So it's just nighttime, it's just black, a little bit of purple maybe in there too, and some stars. Nothing really to write home about, but for the most part, these packages are rarely overly designed. They're really about just letting you see what's inside the box because that truly is the main event. The back of the box has a pretty nice bio about who Darkwing Duck is, and quite honestly, if you don't know who this character is, you need to pause this video, run over to Disney Plus, and watch some DW right now. But aside from that, the bio itself is pretty darn good. And we also have a big picture of Darkwing Duck here and how he's going to look once he's out of the box. Along with a reminder of what this piece is, which is a PVC figure diorama, aka a statue made of plastic. But most importantly, this box lets us know who made this piece. It lets us know the artist behind it. And we can credit the design of this piece to Barry Bradfield and the sculpting by Varner Studios. Barry has been involved in a lot of the more cartoony statues that Diamond Select has done over the past few years. And Varner Studios is a name you should definitely recognize and put some respect on when you say them, because Varner is essentially the man behind all of your classic 90s toys. Steve Varner sculpted a lot of your classic toys you grew up with, including Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, including Star Trek, Skeleton Warriors, a lot of McDonald's Happy Meal toys, so many things that he and his studio put together for Playmates in particular. And now he's got his family involved, and Varner Studios is kind of where it is now, where they're kind of collectively doing a lot of work in the animated field for Diamond. So you know this is going to be a good piece just based on that name alone. So I'm very excited to take a look at this guy. And I think now without further ado, let's go ahead and get our Darkwing Duck out of the box and take a closer look at him from all angles. And here is our Darkwing Duck statue now out of the box. Let's do a quick rotation to give you guys a full 360 degrees of how this Darkwing is going to look here. And my initial thoughts as well on this piece are there's a lot of really cool elements here, but they feel like there's just one glaring element that I really don't like. Maybe you've already noticed it, maybe you picked up on it for yourself. I don't know, we'll see how it goes. but. Overall, it's something that really makes me very, very unhappy about this piece, and that really disappoints me because everything else about this piece I feel like is just really great. Like this, really looking at it now from all angles especially, I'm really enjoying what I'm seeing until we get back to the front, and I guess it's going to be the first thing that I'm going to have to talk about because it really is the only thing I dislike, but it's such a very big thing that it kind of needs to be talked about right away up front here. And what I'm talking about is, unfortunately, the cape right here. So I just do not like how it looks and where it's positioned. And that really is unfortunate here. You know, looking at it, it's nicely done. It's got, you know, great cape detail on it. It's just, why is it in front of him like this? You know, that's, that's kind of the issue here. And we've seen other statues before where they've had capes. I mean, I've seen a ton where I talk about how much I like the capes, in fact because they tend to be really cool, very nicely done, and, uh, you know, integrated into the piece, whereas this right here, it just don't work for me at all. It's just not what I wanted. And, uh, yeah, it kind of it kind of ruins a lot of my enjoyment of the piece because of how it's done here. So, as you can see, Darkwing is perched atop a building, and he's holding on to his cape, and it's flapping in the wind because he is, after all, the terror that flaps in the night. 
But this cape is just literally right in front of him, and I don't like it. It looks so detached from Darkwing, especially from this angle, too. I mean, you can barely even tell Darkwing has a cape. It just looks like he's some piece of fabric or something just blowing towards him or around him. Uh, from this side, it's a little bit better. It's, a, it's actually a lot better. You can tell that it is his cape. But I still don't understand the choice here. I don't understand why he's holding it like this and why it's holding in front, why it's being held in front, I should say. I don't understand this choice. It's, and it definitely was a choice to be made because, you know, you don't just arbitrarily put this like this. There's gotta be a reason for it. And my thought was like, well, maybe this is an issue related to like production or something, or maybe it's budget. But again, no, we've seen capes in other formats and they've always been behind the person. They've been flapping freely or doing something equally dynamic, but rarely are they being just clutched in front of them by the character. Cause you can see it here, Darkwing is in fact holding onto his cape and it's kind of bunched up and just flapping around over here. It's, it's huge. It's also a huge cape actually when I say that. It's huge cause I mean, look at the size of it. It's, you know, from here all the way to here, this cape is like, I feel way, way bigger than Darkwing's cape actually would be. I, I don't know about that, but I think that's that's the case here. I think they made this thing enormously cartoonishly big, and this is already a cartoon, so how much more big does it need to be? So yeah, I do not understand this choice. I don't really like it, and that sucks, because everything else about this is really great. I mean, I want to talk about the likeness as well with this Darkwing Duck, because I think that's one of the very, very strong pieces here of it as well. I and mean, look at how good this likeness is on Darkwing. That's pretty much DW right there from every angle. Uh, I commend them for getting that. You know, I, I feel like sculpting a character like Darkwing Duck has got to be difficult. You know, taking a, a 2D character and making him into 3D to begin with is difficult. But when you now throw in a duck bill, that makes it a lot more challenging in all seriousness, because you got to figure out a way to do this and keep it from looking really goofy, because, well, really, that's a different character, but you know what I mean. So I think the face is great. That's like a perfect version of him. Uh, I think his name was Drake Mallard back in the day, right? Right? You guys can tell me, let me know if that's fact or fiction, but I think the, the face looks great. I think the hat uh, looks pretty decent as well. I, I, mean, I guess it is kind of like flapping in the wind, so maybe that's also why it's got a little, a little bit of a crumpled look, and that's, I guess the crumpled look is kind of what's making me a little bit at unease with it, but I mean, that part looks good. Uh, otherwise, the face does look really nice, like I said, and uh, I think the outfit too looks really spot on. I like how this is looking here. You got the classic buttons, you got the collar, the uh, blue, bluish kind of aqua, and I don't know what quite to call that color, cerulean maybe, that's a nice word. Let's go with that. Uh, the really nice bluish tone that makes up his collared shirt over here. I mean, all of those details are great. I mean, it looks really wonderful again from this side here. I mean, you can really see it. Uh, you can see his duck leg as well, which always confused me as a kid and continues to confuse me to this day. It's all looking very nice. Uh, I think I do want to spend some time also pointing out his gas gun over here, which I always loved as a kid. You know, I don't know if they actually made that as like a, a role-playing toy for kids to run around with. I hope that they did, because if they didn't, Man, that is like something they missed out on. And someone's got to jump in on that, making a prop rep replica of that. You know, uh, NECA, I'm looking at you. I would totally love to get an adult-sized version of this gas gun. But yeah, I can't be alone on that. So the gas gun is great. It's a wonderful touch to have in there. I like it a lot. Um, and the pose also is, in spite of the cape, I think a very exciting pose to look at. I just wish the cape was behind him flowing instead of in front of. It's just such a bizarre choice. I can't get around it. Now, I also do like the base here. Let's talk about that. Uh, it's a little bit obscured because of that cape, again, but uh, it's basically just a Canard City... Well, I can't believe I remember that. Uh, a Canard City piece of architecture, but it's basically a Canard City piece of architecture, uh, and it's almost like in that sort of Batman the Animated Series style as well. Uh, it looks really nice. It's a cool looking base. It's also on this really interesting tilt which I like. It's not just like a straight up flat thing here. It actually is on an angle. I like that they've chosen that. That's an interesting choice that I can definitely get behind. It adds a little bit more dynamism to this piece here. It helps with the way that the body is currently flowing as well, all the different lines and how the energy of the piece is moving around. So it's a great choice here uh, and it looks really stunning. And another nice thing about this too, I want to turn it around for you guys, is you can see that it has one, two holes in it and those are so you can wall mount this. That is an amazing choice. I very much like that. I think if you were going to get this piece, yeah, it'd be cool to have on a shelf, but like now you can actually display him somewhere else and hang him from a wall. That's like so cool. I really, really like that choice a lot. It's also a really nice neutral color too, which kind of helps the purples pop out. It's a cool color, but it's also fairly neutral and it helps kind of balance out the dark tones of the purples and the reds in Darkwing. It's really nice. You know, it, it does evoke some of that Batman the Animated Series feel, like I said, too. But that's also akin to what Darkwing Duck was about, because it kind of was a parody of 
those grittier, dark superheroes. It was Disney's version of doing it. And yeah, we took it seriously, but it wasn't meant to be that serious. So one other thing too I want to point out here, you guys have noticed during this video a few times now when we passed by it, there's this little plastic bit hanging down over here. And when I first saw that, I was like, what is that? I didn't know what it was either. So I think this piece is just literally to keep the cape from breaking off or something. Like it, this is removable. This actually does pop out and it connects the base to the cape because the cape does have a little hole over there, which is currently covered because of this piece. But yeah, I'll take it out now to show you that it does in fact come out. And you can see right there is a hole. So I'm thinking the only purpose of this is just to keep these two things attached in some loose way, whether that's for packaging purposes or for actual whether that's for packaging purposes or actual display purposes, I don't really know. I've never seen that before. It's kind of unusual to me, but it's there. I'm gonna fiddle with that off camera, I think, but it's a strange little thing, but it's, it's a part of the statue, go figure. So overall, Darkwing Duck is a very nice statue and I'm very excited to have it in my collection. I just wish there were some big changes here. And this is where it kind of comes down to what you want with your statue. Cause you know, normally I would give you like my rating or my recommend or not recommend with this piece here. But this is a little bit tougher this time because of that cape. And I feel like it's gonna be a very subjective decision to make. Cause you know, for me, I'm not digging that cape at all. I'm not a fan of how it looks. It also just looks way too long. Like I know it was a big cape, but I don't remember it being that hilariously long. But the base is really nice. I love that it's wall mountable. The pose is exceptional as well. Uh, it really kept the cartoony look of the character as well in this 3D version here. You know, Varner Studios knows what they're doing, so I don't normally would, you know, I wouldn't normally ever question them, but but putting the cape right in the front like that, I don't get it. So I'd really love some enlightenment on that. Uh, but otherwise, I mean, I think it's a really good piece. If you're a fan of Disney, if you're a fan of Disney Afternoon, you grew up with it, if you like Darkwind Duck and you like all this style of statue, then it's definitely a must have. Uh, I'm hoping that they're gonna do more with Darkwing. I mean, as we know, as of right now, there is gonna be a two pack coming soon of Darkwing Duck of action figures. That's right, we're getting Darkwing and Nega Duck. So they're gonna basically just reuse the mold and repaint it with a different head, whatever. Um, but it's a great way to do it. So that's gonna be the first time we're getting Darkwing Duck in an affordable version of action figure since Playmates, I think, did it way, way back when. There have been uh, like one or two other companies that came in since then and have done very high-end versions of Darkwing, but this will be an affordable two-pack of DW. I'm very, very happy for that because it's also going to probably fit in really nicely with my NECA gargoyles, so I'm going to be starting to have a whole big Disney afternoon thing going on. That's pretty fun to have. Um, so I'm hoping there's a future for Darkwing. I'm hoping that those figures sell well because if those sell well, that means we'll get everybody else like Lunchpad and Goslin and Darkwing's Rogue's Gallery and especially Morgana. So overall, I'm very, very happy with it. There's just one glaring problem and it's that enormous cape because mm, just, I don't like it. The more I look at it, the less I like it. But I'd love to hear what you guys think about it and whether or not you wanna add this to your collection. So go ahead and hit me up in the comments below and let me know what you think about this version of Darkwing Duck and if you wanna add him to your display. And if you do wanna pick up this version of Darkwing, go ahead and check out the description for this video below. I'm gonna have affiliate links which you can click on and using any of those links help support this channel at no extra cost to you. So that's our look at Diamond Select's Darkwing Duck Gallery Diorama statue. You guys can check it out right now from a few different places. It's available and I think it's worth getting, especially because I wanna support this line and get more Disney Afternoon statues. So until next time, I'm Matthew. This has been Nerd News Today. Thanks for watching and we'll see you guys next time.